So Google's uh, Gemini AI system has been found to be ultra woke, essentially. People have been asking it to depict historical figures and it seemingly cannot portray a selection of people um, and have them all be white. So people have asked for the founding fathers of America. They've turned out to be a very racially diverse bunch. Um, they, people have asked for Vikings, pictures of the Pope, all of them turning out to be, um, did you know it, either Indian, black, East Asian, none of them white. Even Nazis it portrays as <laughs> people of colour. Um, Paul, I mean, this speaks to a sort of broader obsession with diversity among the political class or the media class or the elites. I mean, what do you make of it? I mean, they seem like desperate to rewrite history, rewrite, um, you know, classic fiction. And now, yeah, now we're seeing it even in AI. Well, look, on one level, it's hilarious, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you see some of these these pictures and as you say, the, the founding fathers included black women, apparently, um, and Vikings and, and whatever. And, and it's actually quite funny. And you think that the company deserves all the, all the flack they get mm -hmm. and they deserve the, the backlash and the humiliation that they're, they're currently experiencing. Um, but on another level, I think there is a there is a serious but there is a serious point about whether or not, you know, it, it's right for um, big tech, for uh, ent the entertainment industry and whatever to essentially rewrite history and to present history in a way that simply isn't accurate, but they do it because they want to, you know, promote diversity. Mm. Now, I think unless you're, unless you're producing something that's science fiction or fantasy or whatever, where of course, you know, normal rules don't apply, um, then actually you probably do have some sort of moral duty, especially if it's something that kids might read or, mm. or watch or whatever, to make sure you anchor it in some sort of reality. Um, but we are, we're just witnessing uh, industries left, right and centre, um, which are, are doing this stuff because they want to flaunt their progressive credentials and they want to, to virtue signal. Um, and there is a danger that if they aren't checked on it, um, then it just becomes the natural thing to send stuff down the memory hole uh, and to say, no, this is how history was because mm. this is the more palatable version today. Uh, and I think there's a real question about whether or not, you know, we should we should allow them to, to get away with that. And it's become almost a thing. Like, I describe it as a nervous tick. It, it, it's like the first thing now for our political and cultural elites and our big corporations, the first priority has to be diversity. And in many cases, it's not actually diversity, it's hyper diversity. It's yeah. a kind of in your face, completely over the top diversity. And we, you know, you see it with the New Year's Eve fireworks and you see <laughs> it with the new rail lines in London and football and museums and, and so on. Um, and it just doesn't cut with most most ordinary people out there who have no particular problem with with diversity but they also have a bit of respect for reality and they don't want this kind of thing shoved down their throat the whole time and it's a bit like I just feel the whole thing has become just a relentless political lecture and if, when you do that when you bombard people with it you end up just driving them away. It's, it's a bit like, you know, being a Jehovah's Witness knocking at someone's door. You know, you, people might be open to religious ideas um, if the person approaching them, you know, does it in a, in a subtle way. But if all you do is just bang the people over the, over the head, say, read this Bible or read this copy of Watchtower <laughs> or whatever, and just yeah. badger them with it, in the end they go, well, you just shut up about it kind yeah. of thing. Uh, and I think we're seeing the same with this agenda. Most people I speak to are just sick and tired of it, frankly. Yeah. And... And Tom, I mean, in terms of sort of tech angle, I mean, this is obviously a really absurd and obvious example of how AI is being programmed to be woke. Mm -hmm. But presumably, you know, this will happen in more subtle ways. And, you know, whatever the current values of the Silicon Valley elites are just going to be writ large in, you know, our Google searches mm -hmm. in how we use AI to generate things, all that kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like this was actually a, an overcorrection from a, <laughs> from a perceived failure on their part to present more diverse uh, images. And you think that's not what surely these tools are there to do. They're there yeah. to be fed all of this training data and then to spit out as accurate and as useful an image or a piece of text or whatever as possible. It's that fascinating way in which every kind of area of life the has this demand placed on it now to mouth the right slogans, to mm. project the right image, to disseminate the right messages effectively and i'm not trying to say it's some sort of you know top down centralized sort of affair but in a really decentralized and nebulous way you have a kind of elite ideology which has to be 
transmitted in every mm. form of life. You see that in the way in which the arts have been sort of relentlessly politicized, where there's nothing which isn't there, which everything is kind of agitprop now. Yeah. And the fact that that's even creeping into AI is, is really telling. It's not a great advert for <laughs> this technology that we're all, always being talked about, but it's just, why, why is there no sp sphere of life, no even kind of discrete techn technological task, which yeah. doesn't have to bow down to the gods of diversity. It doesn't make any sense. And it's, and it, I think you're right, it's an instinctive reaction. You know, it's the default for, for, for people in positions of, of power and influence in political life, in corporations and so on. And I tweeted recently, I heard uh, an interview with uh, an, an official from uh, Rugby League, one of the top officials in the governing body of Rugby League uh, on BBC Radio. And he was asked, you know, why should people watch Rugby League? What's the great thing about it? Now, there's lots of things you can say about Rugby League. You can say it's fast, you can say it's brutal, you can say it's thrilling, you can say it's physical, all of those things. Uh, and his response was, it's diverse. The first word he used, <laughs> it's a diverse nice. sport. Now, if you went to most rugby league fans in the, the, the north and whatever and said to them, why do you watch this sport? I suspect not one of them yeah. would say, oh, because it's diverse. You know? But, <laughs> but the, the, the person representing the governing body clearly felt, it's almost like the default position has to yeah. be, that has to be my first answer. Um, and, and it's become all-encompassing, I think, for, for some of our elites. And, and as I say, just doesn't resonate with ordinary people at all. And ethnic minority ordinary people as well, you know, just yeah. but this is the other thing. This is often presented, this discussion as a sort of like moan of white males who are upset that not every single family on a television ad is <laughs> immaculately Anglo-Saxon anymore. That's not what this is about at all. This is a really exactly. bizarre, this idea that your average um, black Brit or Asian Brit or whatever is walking around terribly upset because of the fact that they're not adequately portrayed in AI images of the founding fathers. It's absolutely mm. ridiculous. I mean, it's patronizing exactly right. in the extreme. And yet we still go along this particular route. There's also something where this desperation to rewrite history, this new idea that like accuracy, historical or otherwise, is like racist now, effectively, um, also leads to the sort of, surely, the sort of downplaying of historical injustices. There was one example, one of the sort of tech journalists who were having a lot of fun on these AI generators over the past couple of days, just typed in something along the lines of US senators from the 1800s. And naturally, it spat out an Asian American, a Native mm. American woman in full headdress <laughs> and everything. And then they had to point out that, of course, you know, the first female senator, who happened to be a white woman, was in, nine, was in 1920. Mm. So there's something where if you're desperate constantly to say, well, actually, the senators have always been really diverse, or actually, there were black Roman centurions who were all over Britain, and actually this and actually that, you're giving a warped view of history, which surely almost implies that... Um, the historic injustices that we're supposed to talk mm. about all the time almost didn't exist. It doesn't make mm. any sense, but yeah. a lot of this stuff doesn't make much Sometimes sense, does it? Borders well. on, the, on the ridiculous. I, I, I wrote a little while ago when ITV a couple of years ago made a remake of the Darling Buds of May. It was called The Larkins, which is set in 1950s rural Kent, mm -hmm. which is obviously probably as white a community as you're ever likely to see. <laughs> Um, but one of the, the main characters, Charlie, was West Indian and the brigadier was Asian and the school teacher was also Asian. And I think it just insults people's intelligence. Nobody's saying, of course, that, you know, black and Asian actors, you know, <laughs> shouldn't have the right to appear in productions. But if I just think when you've got something like that, for example, which millions of people have read and seen over the years, it's clear that the producers were trying to change it, not because it added anything to the yeah. story, but yeah. because they were trying to send a political message. Um, and I just, as I said, I just think in the end that insults people's intelligence. There should never be barriers to, to, to people from whatever background pursuing their career, actors, entertainers and whatever. But at the same time as producers, you do have, as I say, a, a, a duty um, to at least try to make the thing realistic, unless, as I say, you're doing science fiction or fantasy. And no one does that now. Stuff is just going down the mem memory hole and historical, historical reality, I think, is just being reinvented.